At the bottom, there's only one direction to go, up. When Matthew Nola left the Nankai refugee camp and boarded a one-way flight to America with his family, he could have only imagined that his return ticket would come in the form of an unexpected game, pickleball. Now recognized as the fastest growing sport in the world, pickleball has transformed Matt into one of its most passionate advocates. From playing in tournaments to developing future stars to building a brand that would help put his ancestral homeland of Laos on the map, Matt has become a key figure in the sport's rise. When we spoke to him back in 2022, pickleball was barely known in Southeast Asia. Today, sports are springing up across the region and Matt is leaving a lasting impact by spreading America's latest sports craze and changing lives along the way. All right. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of C4 Podcast. Southeast Asian Athletes Achievement Through Adversity. My name is Coach Andetka. I'm here with my co-host, John Messina. We have a guest on um, today that has been on before, but I'm going to let John tell you all about him. Um, if you guys haven't ready, please uh, like, comment, share on our Facebook page, Lower American Sports Hall of Fame. IG is Law American Sports. Our website, Law American Sports Hall of Fame.com. Uh, if you have anyone or know of anyone that would be, you know, that would, would be a good fit for our show, uh, please send us a message because we'd like to, you know, we like to keep telling these stories of uh, um, adversity that our uh, athletes, you know, have overcome to be to be who they are and to be where they're at. All right. So it's all about it's all about storytelling. So, all right. So I'm going to pass it on to John and he's going to introduce our former former guest and he's going to tell us tell us a lot about what's going on again yeah so this is exciting because we had mr matt nola on about two years ago way back in episode 25 so if you have not listened to episode 25 the pickleball episode please do go back and check that one out it's an exciting one and that one matt took us through his personal journey um into the sport and also told us you know exactly what it is so hopefully some of you know what it is now, but check out that episode because Matt is back. I had the honor of spending quite a bit of time with Matt. Since then, right, Matt, we got to hang out in Cambodia together at the SEA Games nice. and bump into each other 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 places. And I'll tell you what, this guy has done so much since then. Back then, pickleball was just getting going and so was Matt, but it's just the beginning. So with that, Matt, I mean, a lot has happened since our interview two years ago. Uh, what's going on with pickleball now? Wow, Sabadi, everyone. Just want to say Sabadi and thank you, Echo, and um, and also to uh, John for allowing me to be on here. I finally get my own my own uh, section, <laughs> so I'm honored. <laughs> First of all, I'm honored. Um, so honored to, to be here among you two who have like paved the way for for us athletes, for Lao Americans to to really give back to the community. So uh, now I get to sport the the Olympic rings for Lao uh, since. Two years ago, was it October 2022, almost two years ago, um, I am now an official Lao national athlete. What does that mean? Um, wow. <laughs> so I represent Lao in, in, in the sport of pickleball. Uh, since then, you know, I've gone as a player, I've accumulated several medals, uh, the first gold medals for pickleball in Laos. And I've gone back to Lao several times to meet with the Lao Olympics Committee, the sports committee. Uh, to uh, meet with Dr. Um, His Excellency, Excellency Dr. Put Sima, Simalabong, um, Mr. Sangpon, Secretary General of the Olympics Committee, Mr. Budma, and have really just, you know, thanked them for allowing me to represent uh, my home country and for giving them and, and giving them the medals that, you know, the country deserves. So I, I really want to, you know, in the beginning, I know this is kind of going into it right away. In the beginning, it was a lot of like personal ambition of me wanting to go back and, you know, you know, flex my muscles and pick a ball and, and, and really see what I can do as an athlete. But since then that has evolved a lot uh, being able to be immersed into the community, um, being able to be around athletes, young athletes too. It, it has evolved from a vision of personal ambition to now, how can I help grow the community uh, in Laos, especially not just pick a ball, but sports, right? So I'm excited to share um, an update on my journey and what's been happening in my life and, and everything else in my trips to Laos. Uh, and so, so 
thank you guys again for, for allowing the podcast. Well, that's great, Matt. Yeah, we're excited to hear about this whole journey. I mean, how has how has the country of Laos taken to pickleball? Well, you know, um, like every other country, it, it, it do we really take a, a sport seriously until it hits mainstream, right? So in America, we have almost 50 million people playing pickleball now, ages from four years old to 90, I think 95 years old playing pickleball. So you, you have a, such a huge uh, um, net of, of players, age age range, right? Um, and now, like, for, for Lao to be, to be able to accept pickleball, um, it's not because of me, right? Uh, I've had my challenges going in there, and I don't really truly full-time live in Lao. So it's been very uh, – it's been a challenge these past few years, um, really trying to grow the game and try to incorporate the game. You really have to be there, and you have to have people that love the game as much as you do to really pour it back to the community. And so, uh, thankfully, there are some mutual friends that you and I have uh, in uh, Alan uh, and, and T, right? Uh, the, the guys from Australia, the, the Vietnamese guys from Australia who have actually planted themselves into, the, into Lao sports, Lao community, and really um, coach in, in tennis, in uh, swimming, in other aspects too, to help build out sports. And then their organization is called MITS, M-I-T-S. And so what they have been doing is I've been partnering with them, working with them to really build pickleball in Laos. And now they have weekly socials. They, they build pickleball into their summer camps, training athletes. They've gone with me into uh, several tournaments, international global tournaments, Vietnam, Thailand, right, Philippines. And so now we're working, partnering together because they're planted there to really now we're looking for athletes who can compete on a global stage. And we've found some very, very uh, um, great candidates, right, um, in Laos. So uh, we recently, yesterday, just they just received a shipment of 100 paddles to, to really pour back into the community. So there's outside, outside uh, organizations that are looking into Laos right now uh, because of what's happening and saying, hey, we want to give back. We want to build infrastructure uh, for pickleball in Laos because it's such a – to me, it has been such a really positive impact in several other communities. And I know that, and, and from my personal experience, being in Laos several times this past year alone and throughout the years that I've seen pickleball really uh, bring a lot of joy to former athletes, current athletes, and also to expats and to local communities that, that are, are uh, able to play. Yeah, that's exciting. So for those of you who don't know, Chiton and Alan Vong, Vietnamese Australian guys living in Laos. Chi's wife is is Lao, um, and they've got a tennis center, the Mitz Center, that they've now converted into a pickleball center. At times, mm -hmm. right, Matt? So anybody in Laos who wants to play, there is now a place where you could play routinely. They have camps, clinics, right, lessons, the whole mm -hmm. thing going on. Um, so the great, it's a great partnership um, that you formed with them to have, like you said, boots on the ground that are able to continue to develop it there, there locally and, and get get the word out to the community and teach the sport. Yeah, absolutely. And um, last year during our podcast, you know, we went to our first international tournament. I was growing my brand. Um, uh, one of my athletes and I from Philippines, Leander Lazaro, um, we went to, the, to Vietnam because it's a newer sport in Vietnam. Uh, we went to Vietnam, started at Hanoi, that was my first tournament uh, uh, competing under the Lao national flag. And we, we took gold for pretty easily, right? Because it's a fairly new sport. And it, it was against four, um, current professional tennis players, right? Um, after Hanoi, we went to Ho Chi, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, again, fairly easy against, but they were growing, right? Um, this was about nine months ago. Now, fast forward to today, Vietnam went from six to eight courts to over 500 courts now. This is how serious, like, wow, uh, pickleball has been for Vietnam. They're, they're sending their athlete, professional uh, tennis players, to now full time pickleball players, right? Bringing in coaches, bringing in training programs. Uh, they, you got like big companies like Vin, uh, Vin Fast, uh, Viet Jet, Viet TV, all pouring in resources to build their program and i'm seeing this is like wow 
Vietnam used to be, um, you know, they weren't even in the pickleball scene. Now they're toe to toe with a lot of the, the top pickleball countries in, in, in Asia, right? Like Australia, uh, Pacific, um, Taiwan, Philippines, India, right? So now I'm thinking, wow, wow, we need to really ramp up our efforts in pickleball because it's going to be in the SEA Games pretty soon. Okay, so you think it'll show up at the SEA Games soon. What about the Olympics? Olympics, um, they're saying no in 2028. I have sources say we're, we're trying, we're working our best. Uh, there's been a lot of initiatives. Of, if you've seen my Instagram, I was in Dubai about a month ago uh, in the right in front of the Burj Khalifa, right? Uh, the Saudi, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia there too. Like the, the, the biggest pickleball names in the industry, not just pickleball names, but the biggest minds in, in, in sports was there in Dubai saying, hey, how do we get pickleball into the Olympics? And I think uh, they're doing, they're paving a path where it's uh, proper, proper channels, really growing infrastructure, really investing in companies that, I mean, not companies, but countries that need uh, resources to play pickleball, right? So it's, this game has like, catapulted tremendously since we've last talked so yeah that's what's happening on that on that end very good so tell us about your brand though because it was in its infancy last time what's going on yeah with I that? Think when we talked i was still representing um it was still just a concept right um not until i went to our first international tournament in phuket thailand you know what, what i saw was like you know what what do I need to do to really, you know, get into this market, right? Um, I saw a need, a, a huge gap in resources for these athletes. You got these top, top-notch athletes, so talented, with worn-out paddles, right? Uh, with equipment that's, wow, you know, it, it's a little tougher when you're paying, you know, what, $150 to $200 a paddle in, in that part of the world, right? That's expensive. And, and these paddles only last every... You know, professionals in the U.S. every two weeks, two and a half weeks, right? You're paying that much. It's tough. And so, you know, I thought, okay, maybe my purpose is to, to build this company so I can help these athletes. And so today we, we, we have over 80 athletes in 19 different countries in less than one year sponsoring them, like providing resources to these athletes so they can p- compete, have the same type of equipment uh, on, on that same level, right, as uh, everyone else, as the top pros. So we're excited, um, and we're in the we're really really ingrained in in, in Asia. So that's that's what's happening. Uh, our athletes are amazing coaches, former t- professional tennis players, all different backgrounds, and and they're excited for this next wave of, uh, of of pickleball to come to Asia. Yeah. So the company's called Lunar Pickleball, right? And you know the big thing we're all waiting for here in the U.S. is is there going to be a official lunar us launch so we all could get a hold of some of those things <laughs> yes you know my my whole thing was there's over 800 paddle companies in, in mm-hmm. and, and there's no to me like there's not a, a really a point for me to flood the market with another paddle right i, I truly believe like if we're going to do things right invest in people invest in community and really give back and and you know and i i totally believe that uh, uh um that's going to come around back around to the business will grow on its own. Right. And I'm excited. Yes. There will be a lunar launch in USA uh, in the near future. We don't even have a website yet and that's okay because you know, our energy and focus is really building community right now. And I think we've done a really great job of giving back of really supporting athletes, uh, whether it's through the paddles or through coaching Uh, we're excited. And so I've gained a, a few pounds. I went from an athlete to a, to a coach to an entrepreneur. So it's a, (laughs) It's a little different. <laughs> Sorry, where will we see you play next, Matt? Uh, play next. So, wow, good news. Uh, I was just named or appointed as uh, one of the head coach of uh, the Southeast Asia Surge, and that's a major league pickleball team in Australia. Um, they do – it's like a team tennis format, in, but team tennis and pickleball, right? Um, this is a, a very high-profile event uh, that's happening Um some of my uh, athletes are, are top in, in, in the world, right? Uh, from Taiwan, Peixin Kao, um, another Taiwanese female athlete, Yu Chie Xie. Her sister just won Wimbledon, like three, like two time, two time back to back Wimbledon championships in, in doubles, in mixed doubles. Um, 
Marcel Chan uh, from Hawaii, and also Leander Lazaro from uh, the Philippines. So uh, we have a really stacked team. Uh, I'm excited to and honored to, to coach that team. And uh, I'm bringing along uh, Alan Mung, too, as my assistant coach. So we have two Lao coaches that are coaching some high-profile, top-in-the-world athletes in pickleball. So not just pickleball, but they're former tennis players, former professional tennis oh, players. So. Okay, you meant Wimbledon, the tennis match. They were a former Wimbledon tennis player that is now a pickleball pro. Yeah, so yeah, Yu Chie, Yu Chie Xie, one of the athletes, her sister just recently won Wimbledon in mixed doubles. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow, yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool and exciting. I didn't even know there were pickleball leagues and teams. Oh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. So the team is, mm-hmm. so this is a Southeast Asia league that includes Australia. So this is a, basically like a league that what covers a bunch of countries down in that region. Yes. And so Australia, what they have is a major league pickleball Australia. Um, they, they had a draft in June. So anyone interested in playing in, in the league, uh, they submitted their application, their video interview um, and their credentials to, to play and to, to, to be in the draft. And so, I think there's about eight teams, eight to 10 teams, eight to 10 captains, owners of these teams. And they went through a really like a draft, just like the NFL draft, NBA draft, right? Um, and it was exciting to see uh, the team format. The team format is a little different. Um, well, it, it, the competition similar, but you're playing um, gender doubles. So men's and women's, and then you're playing mixed doubles, two sets of doubles. And uh, I believe if there's a tie break, there's a dream breaker format to singles into the doubles. So very, very, very exciting format. Okay. And then they kind of score all those matches for the, to see who wins. Yes. The overall correct. team. Head to head league. Like you're playing yeah. with two different teams and in the season lasts about, I think uh, there's three different tournaments in, in a season, in a, in, a, in, a, in a six different tournaments in a season. So the first location will be in Gold Coast, Australia. Uh, we'll be playing head to head with two different teams. Uh, in October, we'll be playing in Vietnam. Uh, in I believe in somewhere in Vietnam, but um, yeah, we'll be in Vietnam. And the third location will be in Sydney, Australia. That's exciting. Well, that well, yeah. that's really cool. Well, Co, you got anything for Matt here? Hey, Matt, tell us um like, tell me a little bit more about your recruiting po- process. Where are you finding all these athletes? Are they Word of mouth, they come to you, or like, how are we hearing about all these, you know, exceptional world class athletes? It's not yeah, someone who's pickleball, right? They're coming from world class tennis, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have players like I, I met, I was in a tournament in, in Phuket last year, and uh, to the one of the Vietnamese guys, uh, Jiang, right? He came from straight from Davis Cup. And I say, oh, what's this pickleball thing? Straight wow. to the tournament, yeah. And he um, he murdered everybody. <laughs> he actually wow. won uh, the 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 open singles uh, division, right? Um, singles from from singles tennis from tennis to singles uh, pickleball, very easy, very quick transition. But doubles takes a little longer, right? The doubles game is just very different. You have the kitchen and everything else, but. Um, uh, these athletes, there's you have to be planted in Southeast Asia or in Asia, right? To to know who they are, where they're from, uh, and going through these tournaments, right? I, I get to uh, scout, get to see who's who, and I also visit these countries, right? Going to these clubs, and you have like tennis players leisurely playing pickleball, and if I see talent out there in in like Taiwan, in Taipei, I see some former um, current tennis players playing pickleball. I'll go up and say, hey, are you interested in playing pickleball? Hit with them, get them interested, and show them, hey, there is a career path now that's available in pickleball, not just tennis, right? You look at the likes of uh, Jack Sock, went from top-level tennis to now, now pickleball. Now Andre Agassi, Michael Chang, right? John McEnroe, all involved in pickleball. So wow. it, now that it's so mainstream, yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these players are now, or athletes are now like, wow, okay, maybe pickleball is, you know, a thing now. Before, like a few years ago, I would say, you're not making much money. Now the top, the top pickleball player in the world is making, I believe, three million dollars a year in pickleball. 
Wow. That's wow. a lot of money to play pickleball. Uh, sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. And it's all, it's still new, you know? So I, I mean, I could imagine at some point we may be years away, it'll get to like the level of tennis where you've got people making, you know, millions, household names like Andre Agassi mm-hmm. uh, coming out of it. And you see like a lot of like um, Asia athletes or Indian athletes, uh, wanting to go to PPA, wanting to come to America because America has the only uh, really professional tour, right? That's actually competing athletes and has a career path. But, you know, shout out to uh, Pranav Kohli. Um, he is like a, wow. I mean, he's done such a great job of building his new tour up, uh, the Pickleball World Rankings. And now he's uh, really investing in infrastructure, in, in, in communities and countries, and, and really going to launch a, a really new, refreshing tour uh, in this side of the world where we don't have to go to America anymore, right? Uh, you're you're going to be competing in uh, um, India, Southeast Asia, China, right? All those all those countries, short flight away, right? So now it's the pickleball scene is really really going to blow up in this side of the world, on that side of the world. No, oh, that's exciting. Well, yeah. Go ahead, Co. No, that that's that's amazing. You know, I mean, it's talk about like how new the sport is, right? Like, let me give you an example of what of what I did. Bodybuilding. Bodybuilding's been around since the seventies and the eighties, mm-hmm. right? And the top Mister Olympia best in the world might make half a million. Mm-hmm. You know, so be like wow. I mean, and that's just and the money that we spend on bodybuilding our, ourselves, the food you eat and, and all that. It's like it, it doesn't even it doesn't even make up for it. So like, yeah, to hear what in a few years, you know, how pickleball is going, that's amazing. Yeah. And pickleball world rankings and um, they just launched in 1.5 million per tournament per tournament. <laughs> that's, that's wow. Yeah. It's, now what about uh, for kids? What about kids that want to get into it? I mean, how early mm-hmm. can they? Start? Yeah. You know, um, you need football and all that stuff. Huh? What about pickleball? How early can they uh, kids start? Uh, I, I mean, for, in order for pickleball to, to grow, I believe that the kids are the future, right? They have to, they, we need to get kids playing uh, in, in order to add to the pickleball ecosystem, right? Can't stop here. And it, I don't want, we don't want it to be a trend. So for us, it's like, a, there's a lot of initiatives where we're going into schools. I'm part of a, I'm a USAPA ambassador also. And so we go through these high schools in America right now. You got kids, you know, it, when I grew up, we got kids going out doing some stupid stuff. Now these high schoolers are playing pickleball on Friday and Saturday nights. My parks in my city are full. 30, 40, 50 kids playing pickleball. Wow. Right? It, it's like a, a, a trend for kids now. I mean, and these kids like, you know, have baggy pants, have like different, different walks in life, right? And they're playing pickleball. It's a cool thing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in Thailand, like these celebrities are playing pickleball. Like celebrities I watched growing up in uh, in um, on TV on the Lacan, right? And I'm now I'm training them, <laughs> which is crazy. So it, it, it's it's really a hot trend in, in sports right now since it's so easy to pick up, right? Like ping pong, uh, not but but you're actually exerting a lot of uh, uh, good energy, uh, losing some calories, and so why not? Right, being competitive at the same time. It's not like tennis where you know you, you need at least four or five, six years of formal training to, to really get a good rally. Pick a ball, give you, uh, give me uh, two hours, I'll get you a good rally. Back yeah. and forth. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. I started playing it recently, Matt. And you're right. Tennis is hard to get a hold mm-hmm. of, and you got to move across the court long ways and position yourself. I mean, there's obviously tricks to this, but you could get a, a good little game going, and after one day of practicing. And that's mm-hmm. why it's taken off. And you can't get a court around here. If the weather's nice, you can't get on the courts here. Mm-hmm. They're building more um, out here. Um, Co, they're they're taking part of the Charlestown Mall. Somebody wants to turn that into like a pickleball center with like food and drinks and everything. Oh. And yeah, yeah. So it is coming, guys. It's this is this is the future. The sport. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, Matt, any any um, advice for anybody that wants to get into sport, particularly if they're visiting Laos? Oh yeah, visit MITS, M I T S. Uh, they're they're really they have a lot of leagues and programs on their Facebook page. They have scheduled events also. 
Uh, we're going to be actually out in Laos doing something at the international school. I forgot the school's name, but... Um, Zhang Zhang um, International School. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're going to launch an, an event out there and, and really get things official in Laos, right? Start the federation. So okay. um, in Thailand, so many places to play. Check out Lunar Pickleball, our, our Instagram also, if you want to figure out, you know, what country. We're in every country, so we know the places to play. So, um, yeah, lot, lots of stuff going on. Um, the Pro Tour coming in, in pretty soon here. Pickleball World Rankings. Wanted to give a shout out to Pranav Kohli too for donating uh, those paddles to Laos. So that, that means a lot to our community. I'm excited. So. Yeah, that's great. And I know we won't announce it officially on here. There are more pickleball courts going up in Laos. Hopefully we'll be able to tell everybody about those in the not too distant mm -hmm. future as well. So a lot of really cool things. Well, yes. hey, Matt, thanks, folks. Um, this is a recap. Again, if you haven't listened to episode 25, go get all the background. We mentioned a few names on here, Chiton and Alan Vung. We got them on the roster for future guests, so stay mm -hmm. tuned. They've got some interesting stories about all the cool stuff they're doing with sports in Laos and other countries in Asia. So we'll be bringing that story to you guys soon with that co. Anything else? Nah, uh, wow, it's like that's amazing, right? Like it's it's been two years since we last talked, and just to see the change, uh, that's really great that you're doing well, man. De you're definitely blessed. You're definitely blessed. So, I am that, appreciate thank it. Thank you for coming on again. Thank you for coming on again. Yeah, yeah. My wife, uh, Judy, my son Malachi, man, they they've been the sitting at home supporting me, and and just you know while I am away, it's it's not easy to to travel as much as I do, but. Um, I have such a, a wonderful family that supports me, my friends and, and all my networks too, the partner Bruce and Rich and everyone else uh, for YouTube for that such a, giving a, a channel and a, a place where a, a athletes can, can uh, have their voices heard, very important. So I appreciate you two for what you two are doing and investing your time and energy to, to really highlight the Lao community, the Asian sports community. So yeah. 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 Like when when you're traveling halfway around the world, you're flying first class, right? I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Well, I we have to say that. One, one day if pickleball is drawn the way as yeah, soon you'll be traveling first it, class halfway around. In two the world, years. You know? We'll have you back on in two more years and then you'll be traveling first class. So. Two more years. And before yeah. then I want you two to get on a pickleball court with me. In Laos. Yes, right? for sure. Yeah, when I'm there I, next. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm planning on getting back there sometime. So yeah. For sure. Awesome. You need to connect. I appreciate you too. Cool. All right, folks. Well, that's another episode of the C4 Cot Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Again, like, follow, share our show. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. The C4 Podcast is brought to you by the Lao American Sports Hall of Fame. Visit us on the web at laoamericansports.com. Celebrating the first, inspiring the next.